Welcome to Brad's Bark. This is going to be a fast paced episode about agility dogs, moving and grooving, weave pulls, you name it. Stay tuned. Is agility something that people should look into as an extracurricular activity for their dogs? I think all dogs should have something extracurricular and especially a dog with a working mind or a, a, a game dog. There's so many dogs are bred to do something mm -hmm. and there's so many things out there now for dogs to do. Agility is one of them and it's, agility is a really fun thing to explore with your dog. A lot of people they see all these dogs going through some poles, through a tunnel, over jumps, up and over a teeter-totter, the A-frame. Yep. Oh, you know your lingo. So what is, what is agility for the average person or the new dog owner or just a fan of, of watching dogs run? Well, agility is uh, a course uh, when we're competing. In our training, we usually train each obstacle by itself at first to a beginner dog so we okay. take our time and we especially with things that are difficult like the weed poles we want to make sure the dog understands it so uh, at first we're training things independently then we start putting them together it can take wow. if you're okay. a beginning handler and you've never handled before okay. and you have a new dog Wait, it can take a one? couple of years okay. so this is the tunnel yes we have 10 foot tunnels, 15 foot tunnels and 20 foot tunnels. The 10 foot tunnel is only used for training okay. to teach the, uh, the new dogs and the intro dogs how to do a tunnel. And then we, the 15 foot and 20 foot uh, lengths are used for trial. Woohoo! Look at that, eh? Okay, so this is at one height. So is this the right height for the shelf? The dogs are all measured by the judge before the trial and they have to be measured to, to twice before they get their uh, their AAC card, their Agility Association card. Okay. And um, the last measurement has to be after two years old because usually they settle down a bit. Give us an idea, Lorna, on what uh, size or what breeds would be going at six. Um, that would be Pomeranians, Chihuahuas, um, those, some of the smaller Papillons, right? And it depends on the age of the dog too, right? If they're over seven and they were a 10 inch dog, they could drop to six. Nice, okay, and then okay. the next level would be 10? 10. 10 inches. And that's some of your smaller Shelties, Cocker Spaniels, Jack Russell mixes, okay. a lot of Jack Russells and Terriers do this, Cockapoos, all those, you know, a lot of the mixed breed, smaller Poodles. The next height we'd go to is 16? Yeah. Yeah, the next height 16, that's most of the Shelties, the Aussies, the Australian Shepherds okay. would be 16. Some of the Australian sh bigger ones are 22, but most of them are 16. All right, so let's take it. What's the next height, 22? 22, those would be your standard Poodles, uh, Border Collies, most of the Border Collies. Um, most okay. of the, actually, um, a lot of dogs do 22. When you, when you go to a, a world championship or something, most of them are doing 22 inches. And it doesn't take much to knock no. this off. So the That's highest... That's safe. Okay, yes. And the highest height... Is 26. Right up here. So we're looking at Great Danes? Um, some Border Collies too. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> I did great, didn't I? All right. This has no sidearms or wings. No, they're non-wing jumps. And we use those in, um, when the judge makes up a course, they will alternate them or use wings. It makes the challenge different. Isn't the course always the same? No, every time you do a run, the course is different and you have to memorize it for 22 obstacles. You have seven minutes to walk the course at a trial. Okay, so the weave poles, what is the whole idea other than the really cool movement that it captures when a dog is going Well, the it is pole? actually the most unnatural movement for a dog on then, the course. Then why is it part of the whole agility um, scene? I think it came from, you know, it's, this is all based on show jumping, right? Horse show jumping? Yes, okay. Right? And it had something to do with the Grand Prix or some kind of thing. Um, and they used to do it at Crufts. They came up with the first... One at Crest in England. 
So there's the word break. Break. A break is the release where the dog doesn't move until they hear the break. But watch Hildy's hands as okay. we go. She's cueing with her hands. More than her voice, her body is cueing the dog, and the dog's hand targeting. Nice. And using Hildy's body language. And she uses her motion, too. She uses acceleration and deceleration cues in her body to tell the dog where to go. Most people think they come to do it for their dog's sake, right? Because I, my dog needs something to do or he's driving or he's out of control. They don't realize how much mental energy is in the handler too. And they say, oh my gosh, I've learned so much. I've learned about being consistent, about rewarding, about expectations for dogs. So, and we've had fun together learning. So if you want to have fun together learning with your dog, there's lots of things to do in the dog world. But agility is one of them that is great, especially with a younger dog or someone you want to invest some years into. And it depends on the breeds and it depends on the people. Well, agility and weep pulls and tunnels and jumps, teeter totters, the whole bit. It's totally exciting for a dog. Brad's Bark rocks. Dogs rock. Let's keep it real. <laughs>